Greetings Room 19 and any other Gateway Gators tuning in. It is week 8 of Room 19's book club and that hits our two month mark. So well done everyone who's been submitting responses and watching the videos. Really proud of you and keep it up. We only have a little while to go before it is the official end of the school year. So uh, like every video I want us to start off with our Room 19 full value contract followed by the Gator Way. One, we are a group with both group and individual goals. We agree to participate in all adventures. We will be safe with our words and actions. We will give and receive honest feedback. Hold no grudges, let it go, have fun. Now the Gator Way. We're examples of the Gator Way. We're safe and kind throughout the day. We're responsible, you know it's true. We're Gatewood Gators through and through. Chomp, chomp, chomp. This week is quite a fun little book and it was a newer one for myself as well. I've always seen the cover of it but I had never gotten to dive in and read it and I'm so glad I did because it's a fun uh, insightful read. It is called Tease Monster and it's a book about teasing versus bullying because there is a very fine line between that and how we can decide which one is which and how to stand up for ourselves. So, Tease Monster is written by Julia Cook, and it starts off like this. My name is one of a kind. People might think that all ones are alike, but there isn't another one out there just like me. He is very unique. Look at all those patterns. I love to eat banana popsicles upside down while standing on my head. I'm made up of many different colors. I can ride a unicycle and play the accordion at the same time. My feet are so big that I only wear shoes when I absolutely have to. Oh, and when I eat pizza, I always eat the crust first. Who does that? I really like being me, but being a one isn't always easy. Sometimes the other ones aren't very nice and they tease me. Uh-oh. The purple one who's older than me made fun of the way I eat. She said my colors were weird and she laughed at my great big feet. The other one started to laugh at me too and agreed with what she said. I felt so bad, all I wanted to do was spend the rest of my life in bed. Ooh, looks like she's got the tease monster on top of her. When our teacher walked by, the laughing stopped and the ones just walked away. But the way they made me feel inside completely ruined my day. Then after that, my best friend Green did something to me that was really mean. When I tripped on the stairs on my way back from lunch, she laughed at me and called me a klutz. I felt so bad when she called me that name. It wasn't my fault. My big feet were to blame. Hmm. This looks like a little bit of a different monster, though, from the one that we were seeing here. That afternoon, when our math tests came back, the plaid one called me Bla Brainiac. When it comes to math, you're like a machine. He sounded all my nice, but to me, it was mean. And look, there, there's the, the same monster from the page before. When I got home from school, I told my mom how rotten my day was. I hate being teased. It's no fun at all. I'd rather be plastered right into a wall. I'm not going back. I'll do school from home. I don't even care if I'm home all alone. Wow. I think his bucket's empty. What do you guys think? Sounds like you've been bitten by the tease monster, my mom said. Dealing with a tease monster is just part of life. Everyone teases and everyone gets teased, so the sooner you learn how to deal with it, the better off you'll be. There are two types of teasing, the nice and the mean. You think everyone's against you, but it's not like it seems. You must learn the difference between each kind of bite because not every tease takes away from your life. Oh, interesting.
what's the difference? I asked. Well, said my mom, it's just like math. So divide mean t is equals, ooh, one divided by mean t is equals not a happy camper, but one times nice t is, is a pretty happy camper plus. Let's see what happens. A mean t's bite is negative and it takes away from your life. It divides you in half and can even make you cry. Mean teasing is bullying and it's not a good thing. The ones that do it are trying to be mean. It's a mean tease bite when it comes from someone who doesn't care about you and wants to embarrass you or make you feel bad on purpose. A nice tease bite is positive and it adds to your life. It multiplies your strength and your voice that's inside. It can help you solve problems in humorous ways it can get you through life on the not so great days. A nice tease bite comes from someone who cares about you and would not want to hurt you or make you feel bad. Nice tease bites are good because they can help you build better relationships with other ones. Purple's tease bites are mean and she's trying hard to hurt you. She does it because she wants power and she doesn't care what you go through. Whenever she tries to single you out, stay calm and ask her to stop. If that doesn't work, stay out of her way and avoid her at all costs. Walk away power, guys. That's, a good, that's some good advice. If Purple keeps mean teasing and still won't stop, then you'll need to go ask for some help. Find a grown-up to talk to that you can trust so you don't have to feel like you felt. Very good point. All the grown-ups are all the teachers and staff around you and... In this case, it would probably be parents, although I don't think you're probably getting too much teasing happening right now. Green Bites was a happy, nice tease. When she said that you were a klutz, she'd never try to hurt you because she likes you way too much. When she called you that name, she was laughing with you. Nice teasing is fun and it can help you get through. The tough times in life, like when you trip over your feet, but a smile and a nice tease can make the tough times more sweet. Hmm, that is an important difference. Plaid wasn't mean teasing. He said what he said to compliment you for something you did. His nickname for you was harmless and fun. You're a very smart kid and a wonderful one. So it looks like Plaid saying, way to go. He was calling you a brainiac, right? Because you're really smart and doing great in math. I think I would like to be teased like that. Just then, my little brother rode into the kitchen on my old unicycle, hanging onto the wall for dear life. He accidentally pedaled into a chair, lost his grip, and went splat on the kitchen floor. What a goof, I said. He looked at me with a tear in his eye. I'm not a goof. Then he started to cry. Geez, what a baby, I thought to myself. I wasn't being mean, I just said what I felt. You always tease me and it makes me feel rotten. I came in to show you how good I have gotten. Ooh, so Mr. Unique One is not even realizing he might have a little bit of tease monster in him. My mom hugged my brother and made him stop crying. She said, you can do it, just never stop trying. My brother got back on the unicycle, grabbed onto the wall, again for dear life, and pedaled out of our kitchen. You need to be careful about what you say. A nice tease bite to you can ruin his day. Sometimes when you nice tease, your words go too far. You just have to realize how powerful they are. How do I do that, I asked. First of all, my one of a kind, just think about what you say. Once other ones hear the words you speak, you just can't take them away. So really thinking long and hard about how we tease, if it's in kindness or if it has a bite to it. You can always pretend to look into a mirror and practice your words on yourself. Do you like what you're hearing? Are your words hurting others? Or are you saying things that can help? Pay close attention to the looks and the eyes of the one you are talking to. Are your words making the one's eyes smile, or are you making that one feel blue? Finally, one, when you're taming the tease monster, there's always the laughing test. Laughing at someone is never good, but laughing with is always the best. Today, I thought about everything my mom taught me about the tease monster, and my day at school was 
quite a bit less rotten. I tried my best to say it out of Purple's way, but when she started teasing me at lunch about the way I eat my pizza, I smiled at her with my eyes, picked up my tray, and changed tables. So remember what his mom said about Purple trying to hold power? He's showing that he, his power is in his own hands by walking away. During art, I made myself laugh when Green accidentally spilled her paint all over my paper. Then I told her that we could start our own, our very own Klutz Club for Ones, and she laughed with me. I told Plaid that I would help him with his math if he would stop calling me Brainiac in front of everyone, and he promised never to do it again. Okay. Well, easy solution, just ask her what you need. Hmm. And when I got home, I told my little brother how proud I am of him for being brave enough to get on a unicycle. I sure hope he doesn't start taking accordion lessons. Oh no! Now that I know how the tease monster works, I now know what some words are not meant to hurt. I'm all, it's always a good thing to watch what I say and understand everyone hears things different ways. Teasing's not all bad, and most times it's fun, as long as you laugh with and not at anyone. And then it says, here, want a banana popsicle? So it looks like one has made peace with those tease monsters, after all. I love this story because I, when I read it for the first time, I realized there are times when I think I'm nice teasing, but it doesn't always come off that way. It can sometimes hurt people's feelings. And so thinking about how I communicate with others and show kindness is super important. And standing up for yourself when the mean tease might be coming out or a, a nice tease might not feel good is super important. And that goes into our question for the day, or at least our assignment for the day. It's not quite a question. Explain one tool you can use when someone is mean teasing you. So I know we're using specific words right now, but these are things that we have been talking about throughout the year and previous about communication and talking to others about your feelings. And so I just want you to explain one thing that you can do to help out. And it can be an example from the book that the mom gave, or it can be one of your own. I decided to keep my example very simple, and I still had a typo, so that just shows. That's why we write in pencil, guys. This is what happens when you write in pen. For my example, I said, if someone hurts my feelings, I can just tell the person, I do not like it when, and I put a dot, dot, dot. So let's say that my dad is laughing at me and says, oh, you're too sensitive. He says that sometimes, and it's a nice tease, but it hurts my feelings. I can say you know, I love you, Dad, but I do not like it when you call me too sensitive. And that's just me, right? So that's just one way to communicate. I would love to see your example of how you use a tool um, to help with mean teasing. Here's my little example. I do not like it when dot dot dot. And the person responding of, I'm sorry, I'll stop. That doesn't always happen that way. And that's why we have other tools like walk away power, asking for help from an adult, etc. So I would love to hear your tool and I hope you have a lovely rest of the week. I can't wait to see all of your responses and we will be tuning in next week with a bad case of the tattle tongue. Take care.